course, you could forget all that. And just have fun! Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of TwizCast. We are here to bring you all the news under the Blizzard Entertainment logo. Games like World of Warcraft, Hearthstone, Heroes of the Storm, Diablo, Overwatch, and much, much more. But who are we? Please allow me to make just a few introductions from the great state of North Dakota, the Southern Belle, that will have 11 tunes to 100 by the 11th anniversary. And she will also have no eyeballs because she has stabbed them out during the grind. Please help me welcome back to the show the lovely and talented Reb. Hello, dear. Hello, Twiz. And I would just like to say that harassment is an ugly rumor being spread by HR departments around the country. And it's something that needs to stop. Can I get an amen? Okay. <laughs> Boy, that escalated quickly. <laughs> I got out of okay. hand fast. <laughs> Anyways, okay. I, I, I appreciate that, Reb. And we will, uh, we will take that to heart, my dear. Um, moving right along from the, uh, the, city, the city that never sleeps, direct from Las, Ni- Las Vegas, Nevada, the man who is not afraid to toss a furnace into the furnace on accident. Please tell me welcome back to the show, the Diablo Deeming sl- Demon Slaying Master 5000, Mr. Archon the Wizard. Hello, my friend. Too soon, Twiz. Too, Too soon. I just lost that furnace. I know. Why do you have to... I have to bring it up. My mood is just shot for the whole show. Because I need a new intro every week, and that was the first thing that came to mind. So... <laughs> well played, old man. Well played. Uh, last but certainly not least, uh, this man has enough empty beer bottles in his house to craft a personalized shank for every prison inmate in the United States. It's the card slinging Duchess of New York, the legendary Mr. Sexy Stutter. Welcome back for another week of beatings, buddy. Oh, I love those beatings. Don't Let you? Let me know? tell you, though, I'm using these beer bottles trying to hit pigeons with them. Not working at all. No? No. Well, the game's yeah. terrible. I did not play. I didn't play baseball when I was little. Just. Well, the, the trick is to open both eyes and not not like some people will close one eye to help their aim, but you're closing both of them, and that's probably what's screwing you up. <laughs> Actually, I'm gonna you know kind of cheat. I'm gonna put a pigeon on my computer screen and just throw up your bottles. That that'll work. That'll work. It gets expensive though. I'm just here to tell you. So, uh, speaking of me being here to tell you, um, hello. My name is Twiz. It's uh, very good to see you guys, whether whether you're watching this uh, on YouTube or you are downloading this on iTunes. doesn't matter how you got here. I'm just glad you're here. You can find me on the Kultiris US server on my Orc Shaman and Twisted Legion, uh, playing some serious Sonya in Heroes of the Storm or working my way up the ladder with what is most likely the craziest Shaman deck I've ever played in my entire life. Uh, you can follow us all on Twitter if you'd like, at TwizBP, at TankThatRev, at Archon the Wizard, and at SexyStutterBP. And if you want to email us, you can easily hit us up, podcast at blizzpro.com. Feel free to light up my inbox anytime that you like. Uh, first things first, everybody, you can get this show in a couple of different ways. Like I just mentioned, the audio is available on iTunes, where five-star reviews are just ridiculously appreciated. Uh, and the video is on BlizzPro's YouTube channel. Um, also, if you guys want to join, join us on the live show or hang out with the always amazing chat room that we have, uh, you can go to twitch.tv slash blizzpro on Monday night at 9 p.m. Central Standard Time, 10 Eastern, 7 Pacific. And, um, yeah, a good time will be had by all. So, everybody, not uh, enough. Enough of this garbage, not so witty banter. Let's dive right into the good stuff because we have massive amounts, massive quantities of things, all the things to bring to you guys uh, this evening. So, why don't we start off with a little bit of our week in gaming. Reb, what in God's green earth have you been up to, dear? Well, uh, unfortunately, I have not been leveling at all. So that 11 by 11 is is going slowly, uh, but surely. Um, I decided to focus on something outside of leveling and just do something kind of fun. And Brewfest is going on right now. So I've been having fun going and getting virtual drunk. Uh, <laughs> it, it, it has just I been... thought you actually bought a real pony keg. It was a keg pony. Gosh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but no, it's been a, a ton of fun, and I have a little bit more information on Brewfest a little bit later. Um, but it's nice to kind of hang out. It's it's like Party Central and WoW right now. And I, I kind of realized that I think that 
if WoW were real, I think I would have been a dwarf rather than an elf or a human or anything else. And it's not an affinity for drinking or, or ale or anything like that. It's sure. just how uh, how <laughs> kind of outspoken and rough around the edges they are. And they like shiny things. And I just really connect to my dwarven roots. So Brewfest has been a ton Wait, of fun. First off, I'll- Archon's not buying it. Second off, mm-hmm. what what race? Say it again. Dwarf. Dwarf as in... <laughs> Yeah, D O R F. Dwarf. Dwarf. It's like the little guy with the mustache from the like the eighties that used to do the golfing things. Oh, or whatever. you guys. Dwarf. Dwarf. Uh, are we gonna look past those? She said she was fascinated with shiny things. Yes, girl. Should we go? Should we go back to that later? I don't know. Ooh. We can no, do- you know how dwarves they like gold and they like all the gold and all the diamonds. Oh my god, you just went French. I did. That was a French dwarf. I was going With more a little so bit of gold Russian. member. Yeah. A little bit of Russian in there. I was going more so the the Austin Powers gold member. I didn't quite reach it, <laughs> no. but you know. Especially since that's Dutch. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Probably vu oh, français. <laughs> oh Reb. Oh Reb. <laughs> um in other gaming, uh gaming happenings i have been so addicted to heroes of the storm and i think it's wanting to take a break from leveling and wild that has really got me hooked in it and i finally shelled out some good old money on heroes of the storm I, mm-hmm, I bought me the storm bundle the enter the nexus bundle starter bundle the uther bundle i don't even play uther but i was like you know what complete uther bundle let's get it just because (laughs) i really want that mount um but i finally got to a high enough level and finally have all of these um heroes so i was able to go into hero league finally and i've played three matches so far and i played brightwing all three times. We won two out of the three times. Okay. Um, I, I solo queued for it. I didn't have anybody come in with me. Um, and honestly, when I get paired up with teammates that that pay attention and know when to engage and are kind of aware of what their support is doing, it's actually a lot of fun. And I am so down for playing some Brightwing and, and practicing that at all hours of the night, apparently. But it, it it's really something that I'm really starting to get sucked into again. Mm-hmm. I love it. I'm glad that you're hopping on the train, girlfriend. I really am. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I can give you a mean bright wing build. Just saying. <laughs> but, you know, <laughs> something that I didn't get to touch on this week was Diablo, since I was so, so concerned with heroes. So I'm kind of mm-hmm. wondering what's going on in the in the world of Diablo, Archon? Now, I think you need a new segue, Reb, because every week it's, and you know, I didn't play. <laughs> you, need a, you know what I also play? Diablo. That, that's true. I'll oh, try yeah. it next time. You know, the one game that I didn't suck play. my life away was Diablo. Archon, why don't you talk about that? <laughs> <laughs> no, I get it. Grab's none of Diablo. The one game player. I didn't waste my life on. Yeah. <laughs> you can not You can only waste your life away on so many Blizzard games in true. a given week. True. Um, but I did waste a little bit of my life because, of course... This last weekend was Double Bounty Rewards Weekend. Ooh. And um, I'm not exactly sure why they did it, but it seems like... Well, here's the thing. For you guys that don't play a lot of Diablo, bounties aren't like the favorite activity of right. Diablo players. Right. It's it's, it's like the chores you have to do. You know, you have to like finish your homework before you can play outside or whatever. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Bounties is the, the homework or the doing the dishes. And then you get to go and do the riffs, which is what everyone really wants to do. Right. And so this time they're like, we're going to double your allowance for doing the chores or, or caches for doing bounties. And um, you would think that that would make it a lot more fun. But no, two, mm-hmm. three rounds of bounties and I was it was already feeling kind of like a grind. But I live for efficiency, so I got to do it. If I'm, if I'm playing and they're going to double the bounty rewards, I'm going to do it because that means less bounties later. And sure. so, um, yeah, had some viewers hop on. Grinded out some bounties for the small amount of time I was able to play this week. Got some of those those items we need for Kanai Cube. Sure. And um, yeah, I'm wondering if Blizzard's going to do that more often because I, I feel like people, although we don't like having to do a bunch of bounties at once, we appreciate being able to get those uh, items a little bit quicker. Sure. And yeah. yeah, that was about it for me and Diablo. I had a last minute trip to Disneyland because Wife Con's been wanting to go. Oh for yes. Long. So hit up Disneyland, yep. and I was really hoping I could report back that I uh, beat her score on the Buzz Lightyear 
Astro Blaster ride. No. But alas, right. No. Well, she always beats me. But I, I felt like this was going to be the time. But right before we got to the entrance, uh, the ride shut down. Oh, Aww. you got sniped. We'll never know. It was probably we'll for the better for me. But <laughs> oh, yeah. dude, yeah. Well, how much did you get for uh, for for that one kidney to be able to afford going there? Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Not enough. I had to sell Not enough. a few other possessions. But it hasn't stopped my drinking. Yeah. <laughs> it's true. It's hard. Yeah, you got to be drinking if you're in Disneyland. True that. True that. Yeah. I'll be there in April. Oh, awesome. So, cool. Yeah. Well, uh, Stutter, what about you? How's Hearthstone going? I have actually... I, w- I want to talk about that Buzz Lightyear ride for a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I have gotten a perfect score on that. That score I maxes out. Shit. I've maxed it out. Wow. Yeah. What? Are you going to tell us? Are you going to oh, give us the secrets to the Astro Blaster? Yeah. Aim deep and don't miss. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Wow. Wow. There, there it is, guys. I, that's my life motto. <laughs> I must say, I've only done it once, and every other time I've done garbage. <laughs> that one time, that was my claim to fame. But did you get stuck on the ride halfway through, right in front of like the super high point target? <laughs> no. So. <laughs> no, but my my brother did, so he has sure. also done it. That's sure. the real key to victory. Sure, okay, so the ride gets stopped. It just well, rip. you can just break up, like bring a penny and throw it on the thing, right? It'll stop or something. I don't know. There we go. You anyway. heard heard it here first. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> dropping knowledge bombs again. <laughs> how to scam the Buzz Lightyear ride? <laughs> but how is how is Hearthstone treating you, Stutter? Hearthstone's doing well. I got to rank five. I put in the effort this weekend. I wasn't just playing with mess around decks. I played a lot of, um, obviously, a lot of Patron Warrior, a lot of Druid, mm-hmm. a little bit of uh, Priest. And I finally just, I got to rank five, and I'm like, I could go on, but there's a max rewards for me. I'm good. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Which, I, I must say, I'm glad the reward system is there, because I wouldn't play otherwise. I would just be like, <laughs> messing around at rank 10, like, you know? Well, Let's and they just they the just introduced that. Police or Astro Communion or whatever it is. They just introduced that not too long ago. So, like, what was your excuse for up until that point? Playing to go get farther. Yeah, I just did it by accident. Oh, okay, fair enough. I respect <laughs> that. I respect that. Hey guys, uh, just so you guys know, at uh, those of you who are watching this on the video, um, I figured out the reason that uh, that Sc- the video is not lining up with the audio. Skype just went through an update for me, and I think it's I think it's crap in the bed on me a little bit so anyways i know it's a little weird just to watch that but just bear with us there's absolutely nothing that i can do about it right now but i'll try and fix it for next week so anyways back to the ladder oh let's move on to your ladder i mean i oh, know you were talking about that shaman deck oh yeah dude yeah my my weekend gaming um i i got introduced to a shaman deck that is just absurd it's just absurd all it is it is like the ultimate aggro killer like I, I actually I can't wait for the ladder to reset, because that's when the aggro comes out the most. And actually, I probably should be playing it tonight because you know two days before the 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 um, this ladder resets and everything, you usually see a bunch of aggro. I mean, you want to talk about how much it craps on Face Hunter? It's not even funny. So like, here's the point of it: the deck itself is capable of 44 healing. Okay, it's got um, two anti kill bots. It's got um, two healing waves, and um, it is nothing but board clears. And what you do is is you basically let your opponent load up the board, and then you just smear it. Um, you know, with, with lightning storms and what's that other what's that other three cost one with a five overload? Elemental destruction. Elemental destruction. I mean, and it craps on secret pally. It craps on everything. Um, the only thing it doesn't crap on is warrior for the most part, um, because of the armor buildup, you usually go to fatigue on that one. Um, but what you do with, with aggro is they, they lay all their cards on the table, like right now, like here's everything I got. And then you just zap it and they cannot do anything about your late game. And even when they get you down, like the lower health and stuff like that, um, you, you healing wave yourself. And this tech has like molten giants in it and stuff like that. I mean, your late game you're winning you're winning every healing wave period dot so um we will share that deck with you guys uh probably in, in a future episode um uh, maybe next week perhaps um because that'll be very fitting for the ladder reset um but uh, you know what i mean it's nice because i know what i'm going to be playing against 
once again, I want to give a big, big thank you to the community because uh, once again, everybody plays the same five decks and that's about it. I mean, all the cards and all the expansions and everything like that. And the meta is literally five different decks. It is Face Hunter, Dragon Priest, Combo Druid, um, Secret Warrior. Paladin, and Tempo Mage. With the occasional Freeze Mage that's working his way back down the ladder. So, <laughs> so. <laughs> the, uh, there's a little bit of Patron, too. But I love playing against Patron Warriors because they're always like, eh, they're not that good. Yeah. They always screw up a move and then they lose because of it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Well, what's really funny is like is uh, with the shaman deck. Um, I played. I played against a freeze mage, and I mean, he was just like emote central, and I was like, I'm I'm gonna keep him unsquelched simply because it's like I want to see what happens once he alexes me, and I drop a healing wave, and then I drop a heal bot or whatever, you know. So he, of course, he drops archmage antonitis, and I hex it, and then um, he was able to draw like three or four fireballs off of it. And then he drops uh, Alex and he starts emoting like, sorry, sorry. So he drops Alex and I heal a healing wave myself and I go from 15 to 29 health. And like you can just see it's like there's like no movement on the other side of the board. Um, and I just emoted sorry, you know. And so then he starts like wailing me with fireballs and I drop an antique heal bot. And... It's like he just he couldn't kill me. And finally, like uh, I had a fire Ellie that I popped his second, um, whatchamacallit, his second ice block with. And that was that. So um, he was kind of he was just really arrogant. And I was like, you know what? Yeah. And then, I, of course, I emoted him one last time. Sorry, as he conceded. So um, <laughs> let's see here. Uh, sorry sorry. <laughs> I did play some Sergeant Hammer this week and the monk and a little bit of stitches. Um Guys, I want to mention this a little bit later. There's a big old patch that's coming for Heroes of the Storm tomorrow, and uh, we're going to cover that on the Heroes Power Hour that I do Tuesday nights, twitch.tv slash blizzpro, 9 p.m. Central Standard Time, 10 Eastern, 7 Pacific. So if you really want to dive into that big time, um, hit the patch notes up. But I played Stitches for a little while, and um, I don't know. I just saw another Stitches playing, and he was just such a harassment. And I was like, maybe Stitches is one of those guys that just, you know, you, you, I've not screwed with him long enough that I need to reintroduce him to, you know, to my life. And, and, you know, he's kind of the unexpected hero of how do we handle this? Cause he's not really normally part of the meta and come to find out he's still garbage. So, yeah. you know, yeah. So, uh, but he did get huge buffs in, uh, in this patch, like at level seven, he's got like 3,100 health. That's it's obscene. Bad. So anyways, um, but yeah, you know what? He's got some. He's got some good numbers, or he's got some some good utility. But his numbers, I mean, he's just there's just other heroes that fit that slot better than Stitches. So you play him for fun, which I guess I mean I don't know. I guess there's Hearthstone decks that you play for fun, but they're not going to go anywhere on the ladder. You know what I mean? So um, yeah, yeah. I think that's that's about it. Why don't we dive into the meat and potatoes of the show, shall we? Uh, sound good to you guys? Sounds good to Let's me. Let's do that. All Let's right. get into the news, shall we? Let's do it. This is Diablo Community Manager Nevelisis, and you are listening to Twizcast. What do you think? I like turtles. All right. He's climbing in your windows. He's snatching your people up. To me, it looks like a level coming to me. The news. Ain't nobody got time for that. Okay, the Blizz Pro News is brought to you by our Patreon page, and let me tell you what is going on with this Patreon page. Uh, by supporting Twizcast on Patreon, you are entering yourself into a way to put a chunk of cash back into your pocket. Okay, when we reach five hundred dollars in pledges every month or every other month, we're going to be giving that money back to a random patron. At a thousand dollars, we're going to do the exact same thing. So if you want a chance to just magically getting a Christmas gift of cash in your pocket for just for supporting our show. This is a great way to make it happen. So head over to patreon.com slash twizcast and for every $5 you pledge, your name goes into the drawing once. The bigger the pledge, the better the chances you have at winning. So um, we, we have you guys in mind at all times and this is just one of the ways that we give back and frankly, you deserve it. Now, I will say one last thing. You could be sitting there thinking to yourself, you know what, I'm gonna wait until they get closer to $500 before I become a patron. That way, I'm not going to have to spend any money waiting for them to get to that point. Well, if you're thinking that, 
then so are a lot of other people, and it's going to take forever before we can start giving money back to you guys. So let's make a push and get us to that goal, everybody, okay? Um, I can't believe it's I, I'm, it's like pulling teeth trying to give away money to people, you know? But Let uh, us give you money. Let us give you money. All you got to do is be there for it, for crying out loud. So Blind the Rogue's back in the chat room. He had to go away from his Wi-Fi for a little bit. Good to see you back, brother. Um, le- real quick, guys, some Blizz Pro news. Blizz Pro is looking for writers. Okay, are you a Hearthstone card slinger? Okay, are you a, a a demon slaying masterpiece? Are you a Heroes of the Storm fanatic? We could most likely use you. So if it's something that you guys are interested in, please email info at blizzpro.com for some more details on how to be a writer and get your get your opinions and ideas exposed round the world. Uh, and speaking of worlds, let's talk about some World of Warcraft, okay? Everyone knows uh, about the upcoming Warcraft movie that's slated to be released in 2016, but something new and interesting has surfaced regarding the movie and its storyline. Reb, why don't you uh, clue us in a little bit on what's going on here? Alrighty, so uh, a few months back, Christy Golden, who is a writer and longtime Blizzard partner, actually confirmed that she would be writing a prequel to the Warcraft movie. Um, and she announced this at the San Diego Comic Con. Um, now, just two months later, the book has made its appearance on Amazon, but only as a pre order as of right now. And currently, it is known as Warcraft, the official prequel novel. Which- <laughs> Warcraft. <laughs> The yeah, official it doesn't quite prequel. As title of, like, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it, it just doesn't. It just doesn't have that ring to Warcraft, the official prequel novel. <laughs> just doesn't. It has. A, it, it leaves me wanting more. But you know what? Christy Golden is one of those writers that does give you more in the content that she delivers. She delivers amazing storylines. Oh, yeah. uh, the way she elaborates her wording, it is awesome. And it, I think it will definitely be worth a read um, with the upcoming blockbuster next year. And it'll actually be released on the 3rd of May, um, 2016. And currently it is priced at $7.99. So I don't know if that might go up a little bit later, but you can pre-order it now for $7.99. Mm-hmm. Now, we do have an official like little blurb um which kind of goes into a a, a synopsis of the plot but unfortunately it does kind of leave out any mention of the alliance surprisingly for good reason Um, it's not feminine enough yeah it's more so going to be uh focused on the formation of the Horde, and this is the uh, official explanation. An original tale of survival, conflict, and magic that leads directly into the events of the eagerly anticipated blockbuster movie. In the realm of Azeroth, the strong and fiercely independent Frostwolf clan are faced with increasingly harsh winters and thinning herds. When Gul'dan, a a mysterious outsider, arrives in Frostfire Ridge, offering word of new hunting lands... Duratan, the clan's chieftain, must make an impossible decision. Abandon the territory, pride and traditions of his people, or lead them into the unknown. And of course, we we know how it unfolds and mm-hmm. we know the eventuality of the story. But like I said, Christy Golden is just a wizard when it comes to, to writing these um she these is. novels. And she is so fun to talk to. I, I had the privilege of uh, of interviewing her about a year ago for what was that, Reb? I want to say it, Tides of War, maybe. Or was it The Shattering? I'm not sure. Oh, either I way. I kind of think it was Tides of War. That might be. I, I think it might be. Yeah, come to think of it. And she is just she is just like a ball of personality and fun mm-hmm. and depth and awesomeness. So if you're not reading Christy Gold's books, um, you're doing yourself a great injustice. Because she's and she good at what she does. also writes uh, Star uh, Star Wars um, Star Wars novels. Mm-hmm. She does uh, add a little bit to that. So she is a great science fiction writer. Mm-hmm. Um, one of my favorite in the uh, the the Blizzard realm. Um, so definitely worth a read. I would suggest t- even Ties of War or um, War Crimes. I believe she wrote as well. Those are both really awesome ones. Um, so yeah, it's worth a read. Yeah. Oh, you know what? Hang on. Check this out. I just I happen to have this here. I got it. I got it. Girl, you are you going to show if this? If you guys are watching this on the video, you need to march right into your, your local borders or Barnes & Noble or whatever it is that you guys have. This right here. Uh, yep. The, yep, <laughs> the Chronicles of yep. War. Right there. It's a little thick, but it's got um, it's got all the stories by Christy Golden, Jeff Grubb, and Aaron Rosenberg. Uh, and that will bring you up to speed on a whole bunch of stuff. Super awesome. 
worth yeah, it. Yeah, the Chronicles of War are a must-have as an avid WoW fan. Um, so in other news, let's actually talk about the game a little bit. I had alluded to this brew fest that's going on right now, and I just have a little bit of basic information for you guys before you dive right in if you haven't already. So basically, brew fest has returned, and it's everyone's favorite holiday. Yes. Well, well, maybe not, but... Uh, it's mine. I love it. I really like it, too, but then again, I'm a dwarf, right? And I re- Yeah, you're a dwarf. That's right. A dwarf. <laughs> Reb's a dwarf. They, I Hashtag think we just, I'm a dwarf. I think we just found our show title. There we go. Um, well, even if it's not your 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 favorite uh, holiday, you're still... You, you, it's still pretty fun, but if it is, you're in pig heaven because Brewfest is back. Um, it started on September 20th, and it's going to be running until October 6th. Uh, Corin Dyer Brew is back in Black Rock Depths, and you can queue up for him. He has 670 item level trinkets that he'll drop. Um, there's also a few new rewards, which I'll go into in just a second, as well as ways to get heirloom weapon upgrades. Very cool thing. Definitely. It, it's really interesting that they they added this, and so you don't have to just purchase them with gold. Um, the, the most interesting items that, that came to Brewfest this year are definitely these heirloom upgrades. So for 300 Brewfest prize tokens, you can snag yourself the Ancient Heirloom Scabbard, which it, it increases an heirloom level to skill up to level 90. And then for 500 of those Brewfest prize tokens, you can get a time-worn heirloom scabbard, which pushes the, the heirloom... Um, up to level 100. So those are pretty awesome. Obviously, 500 and 300 are a pretty hefty amount to save up for. And if you don't quite have the discipline to save up to 300 and 500, there are a multitude of other items that you can blow your virtual tokens on. <laughs> Obviously, you can purchase the garb, which runs about 50 to 100 uh, tokens per piece, and that's going to be like hats and outfits and shoes and things like that. But some other really cool items would be the pets and the toys. Now, there are going to be, there are three pets, um, if you haven't already collected them. The Wolpertinger is actually a reward for doing just one of the quests, so it's mm-hmm. pretty easy. But if you have some coins, it might be worth it to turn them in for a pint-sized pachyderm, which is like a little baby elephant. Yep. Or um, the Stout ele- Elemental is actually the new pet this year, and it is... Um, it's like the little Pandaren water spirits, but it is made out of beer. So it is very similar to um, like the the Chins family brewery, if you remember that in Mist of Pandaria. Yep. So it, it's pretty nifty. I picked mine up, I want to say yesterday, and it, it was worth it. Right. Definitely worth it. Uh, if you have, uh, if you're a collector of the the toys in game, and you're you're going for the achievement to collect, well, I believe 500 of those for another toy, um, then you have a multitude of different toys that you can choose from. Among them being the Brewfest keg pony mm-hmm. or the Brewfest pony keg. <laughs> Very similar, but completely different. <laughs> Um, there's also Brewfest banners, uh, the Pandaren Brew Pack, and then last but not least is the Steam Weedle or the Steamworks uh, Sausage Grill. So that's pretty fun. Who doesn't want to bring the sausages to the party and make it a, a grand old time? <laughs> well, if it's a party, Stutter's going to the sausages is already there. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. No, and you know what? Here's here's something else to keep in mind, guys. These tokens, they I'm pretty sure they don't disappear after Brewfest is over with. You can stash them in your bank. If you don't hit your goal, um, if none of this stuff interests you or whatever, <clears throat> next year, I mean, they're going to have other stuff. They may have the same type of heirloom upgrade type thing that might go to 110 or whatever. Um, if you don't hit it this year, um, stash them in your bank. Stash them in your bank and save them. I don't, I'm pretty sure they don't disappear. Um, You know, in previous years, they were using the tickets which I know did not disappear, and you can actually redeem them in for tokens, which is the new currency. Right. I don't know that the tokens will stay around, though. I oh, think that is one thing they might imagine. have changed. Oh, I can't imagine that they would kill that. But then again, back in the day, you didn't... I mean, I remember my shaman had a whole bunch of of um, uh, stuff from, from various holiday events, currency, mm-hmm. and I just stuck them in my bank, and the, for all I know, they're probably still there. Um, but I just, I've not looked at my shaman's bank in forever. I mean, that's really a downfall to garrisons and stuff like that. In my opinion is 
Like I just don't have access to my bank and stuff like that. Like I used to, it's, it's, it's kind of a hassle to go anywhere. Yeah. So now something really kind of weird and unique. I want to point out this week about Brewfest, and not a lot of people know about this is if you've shined, if you shined, if you've signed up for the brew of the month club, where you receive a brew every month in your mail to try out just for, Bunsies, I guess. Um, you can actually now purchase an angry letter to the Brew Fest Club or Brew of the Month Club. Um, <laughs> I, I think it's a pretty cute thing that Blizzard finally introduced. You uh, pay 50 tokens for it, I want to say, and then you completely remove yourself from the, the club so you no longer get that spam at, at the, the first of the month. Mm -hmm. um, and you can never join it again. So it's, it's kind of funny that you're writing them an angry letter like, hey, stop sending me brews. <laughs> You're, you're getting on my nerves. <laughs> it's really cute, and I think kind of a fun and unique thing that they added. I uh, I do want to say that uh, I was that guy this week that uh, I took my shaman into Corin Dire Brew's lair there, and um, uh, I got the healing trinket right off the bat. First drop, Dunzos got what I needed. I'm out. So that was nice. I think I upgraded from like a level 589 to a 670. <laughs> nice <laughs> little bit nice. of an upgrade there so <laughs> yeah usually i'm the guy that's like i've been spamming this for three years now and i still can't get what i need so screw it oh that's another thing you can um potentially uh, obtain one of the mounts i completely forgot about this because i already had them but you can potentially um receive one of the mounts from doing corn dire brew yep. once a day yep yep, yep. the brewfest ram and the brewfest kodo and, mm -hmm. I, and you know what i mean i think what what are your thoughts on them discontinuing those two mounts and introducing two new ones? Because here's the thing. I'm not doing that dungeon now that I've got both mounts. And once I get the trinket I need, I'm, I'm done and I'm out. But if you retire those mounts and make them not available to everybody, then introduce two new mounts or one new mount or something like that. Right. It gets um, people back into the content. I get that. Um, I, I, for one, am not one of those people who would recommend something being unobtainable except through the black market auction house for the future. And I think that they really saw that a lot of people had reached their what a long, strange trip. They had participated in everything, got their mounts and pets and fun stuff, garb. Um, and then they stopped doing them for a year, two years, three years, depending on how long they played. And they've actually made it so that they introduce something maybe small, like a pet or a new toy. They mm -hmm. try to do that with every event um, that is consistently coming through so that you do have at least one thing to strive for that is unique and that you couldn't have possibly obtained in previous years. And I, I kind of like that model because it just has a multitude of items that you could obtain during the event. And it, it ranges from even if you're a veteran, if you've been playing for for 11 years and you've done everything this still gives you one more new thing to do and one more reason to go back to brew fest one more time okay fair enough fair enough i just think there's nothing wrong with spicing things up a little bit every once in a while <laughs> but but very cool i don't like my ale <laughs> spicy <laughs> she's gonna have that written on her gravestone true <laughs> so, anyhow Okay, let's talk a little bit uh, about some Diablo action. Uh, Archon, there's a couple of things going on. What do, we, what do we got, brother? Yeah, well, right after last week's show, we actually got a little hot fix and a blue post I want to touch on. And then there was this cool fan-made item we can talk some more about. But uh, the hot fix right after last week's show just fixed some small bugs. Uh, but the thing that people might be the most excited about is that they've further fixed Witch Doctor lag. And anyone who's played Diablo in this season knows that uh, it's really hard to play with Witch Doctors or as a Witch Doctor because it just causes crazy lag mm -hmm. if you're using the Helltooth set. Um, and it's it or, or either of the top end sets, I believe, cause just ridiculous lag. Uh, lots of complaints from hardcore Witch Doctors dying and whatnot. Um, so they're slowly going through and fixing problems. And they just changed... Um, the Firewall Rune and Ring of Poison Rune on Wall of Death, as well as the Headhunter's Rune for Fetish Army. So they should no longer cause lag, but I don't play Witch Doctor, so I haven't been able to test it. Oh, uh, okay. But good news for all you people who have had to just boycott playing with your Witch Doctor friends. Maybe you guys can play together again. Oh, very good. Yeah. Um, also, we had talked about that Hellfire Amulet 
exploit a few weeks ago. Mm -hmm. They came out and said what they decided to do. So just real quick, they decided that anyone who accidentally used the exploit (laughs) or from their data maybe accidentally used it, they were like, that's fine. Don't worry about it. Um, if you used it to your benefit, but not in excess, you didn't stream it and you didn't, you know, try to promote it online, then you just got banned for a little bit. But if you streamed it or you're using it like crazy, then you're permanently banned. They said they permanently ban people. Wow. So, wow. wow. Was there go. any, I mean, uh, you don't have to give names, but was there any big names that like really took a hit over that? I am sure there were. Okay. I, I don't have the names to give even if I, if I was going to, but, um, but no, yeah, they, they said that. Uh, people who were online promoting it, they kind of implied, you know, streamers, YouTubers sure, sure. were uh, banned if they were advertising that, which is pretty standard. Um, but there has been a few times where the community felt they were a little light uh, or a little uh, forgiving on those people. And so I think okay. most of us are happy that they take it seriously when people exploit the game purposefully. Sure, sure. But also, even if you only used it by accident, um, if you climbed up in the leaderboards while you were using the exploit, you were removed from the leaderboards for that entry, which okay. I, I think they just kind of had to do so that we didn't have people at the top who got there because they were cheating, even if it was accidental. Was there any way, though, for this that that that, that it happened that people are like, oh, I really don't think this is an exploit. I really think that this is a a... You know, like I just discovered a way to do this. I discovered a way to make myself more powerful, or Probably or is it not like, like that? Or is it like, look, I just identified an exploit and I'm going to just rule the snot out of it. That's well, more likely because what happened, how the exploit worked was, if you were well in, wearing a Hellfire amulet and it broke, and then you took it off, you kept the passive. So although. Most people using it probably knew they were using it. There were bound to be a few people who just had a Hellfire amulet, had it broke, and then they were going to switch it out anyways and took it off as it was broken. Right. Um, probably a really small group of them, but there's bound to be a few of them. Now, you wouldn't... Obviously, anyone who got, like, every passive for the class equipped at once or even got two or three passives at once, clearly they weren't doing it on accident. You'd sure. have to plan that. Okay. Um, okay. But I'm sure there was... A, I think they're talking about the people who maybe just got one or two extra passives... Um, they don't really know if it was accidental or not. Yeah, so if they just, just stumbled like, on it or even, yeah. Okay, I can see that. I can see that. Them. Yeah, And Blizzard's usually pretty forgiving with exploits. They they really like to have a good amount of evidence that someone was doing something on purpose before they go after them. Um, you know, they'd rather, I think, forgive a guilty person than punish an innocent sure. person. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. Okay. And then the one I think thing that I'm really excited about, I think other people will be excited about this too, is they said they're going to nerf the ghosts. And oh, that doesn't mean much to you three probably. I don't know. <laughs> I don't even know what a ghost is. Yeah, it's, it's a mob type. Exorcists are the notorious, horrible elite pack. They just spawn right on you, and they do all the damage right in your face. Yep. And so they said, um, we are planning a few adjustments to the ghost type enemies, particularly their soul siphon power in an upcoming patch. They'll need to be closer to attack, will deal less damage overall, and their channeled attack damage will be spread out over a longer duration. So I think the, the Diablo community will be very happy about that because there's sometimes with certain builds, if you get a, a rift with the ghost type enemy, you just, you just like quit the game. And go in again because it's sure. like why even bother? Why yeah? So why even bother? Yeah, I can yeah. tell the the chat rooms. Exile, Blind the Rogue. They're both they're both like I, yeah. I can't wait for this to happen. Yeah, it it'll be nice. <laughs> yeah, that was it for blue posts. Um, I, uh, Twiz has some pictures he's going to put up about this uh, fan made creation that I mm-hmm. think it, people get excited about. Um, the Necromancer has to be the class that people ask for the most whenever they're talking about, oh, what's the new class going to be in the expansion? Well, we're pretty sure, at least those of us who have talked on Twizcast, are pretty sure we're getting an ex- expansion announcement pretty soon. I think almost definitely at BlizzCon. And um, probably going to be a new class. Probably not going to be the Necromancer, of course, because uh, the Necromancer is really close to the Witch Doctor. Right. But... That doesn't keep the the community from hoping and fantasizing about what the necromancer might be like. And one person in particular, let's see, Nightcrest87, mm-hmm. did a ton of work. Uh, we're not going to show all of it, but you guys can go 
on a uh, line. I'm not sure if Blizz Pro has done something about it yet, but you can see it on Diablo fans for sure. Um, there, they've done the skills, the gear, like literally all the skills for the whole class, all the runes have been thought out. And then this gear that Twitch has put up on the screen, uh, it shows uh, three different sets and a legendary offhand that could be for the Necromancer. Um, and you you really got to look into this if you want to see how well put together it is. Not saying it would be balanced or that everything would work necessarily, but it's really like a well thought out class. Uh, and it's on the forum, so you can, you know, join in the, on the discussion if you want to. Uh, you can see the set bonuses kind of reference some of the skills. Um, but then Twiz has this page up here, which shows, I think, some of the more exciting skills. Of course, if you're going to have a Necromancer, you have to have the Raise Undead skill that allows you to have up to four skeletons. Unless, of course, you have the Skeletal Fiends rune on there. And then you can have six skeletons. You got your Animated Golem and Ethereal Arsenal. So it, it's, it's really similar to the D2 um, Necromancer, but it fits within the D3 paradigm. Um, they have, like, the, the auras on there uh, in another tree that's, that uh, I don't have a picture of. But go through it if you're interested in this kind of stuff. He put a ton of work into it. And like I said, I don't think we're getting a Necromancer anytime soon. I think um, it's just too close to the Witch Doctor. But... Um, it but would be cool. Props to him for like breaking it down and like giving it possibilities and stuff like that. The creativity is through the roof. Yeah, t this must have taken like weeks. Not, and, I mean, his Photoshop time is one thing, but just the amount of thought that he put into this is crazy. I, I think another reason why they wouldn't want the Necromancer in though is like that Raised Undead is a perfect example, there's just too much clutter on the screen. It's, sure. a, it's a problem they have with Witch Doctors right now, but it'd be even worse if you had, like, six skeletons. Jumping and, up. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you guys play D2. You probably remember a group with Necromancers, mm -hmm. and it's just hard to see what's going on. Yeah, there's a lot of, yeah. Like you said, the screen clutter is astronomical. But yeah. no, And you know what? That's one of the things I really notice about the Diablo 3 community is it's like, I'm not trying to crap on other communities, but like there's there's other communities for a big fo you know game that has a big following that offers like nothing, nothing to the developers except for like a lot of whining and crying and stuff like that. And then you got somebody that does something like this. But I see this kind of stuff all the time in the Diablo world. Like people yeah. just like go above and beyond and like blow it out of the water, and it's like holy snot. No, yeah, that's a really good point. I, I think it probably has partly to do with the fact that the community is a little bit smaller and the dev team is a little bit smaller than some of the other games. And so I, I think it feels more like a tight-knit community. And sure. overall, the developers have done an awesome job. I, I, I'll, I'll be honest, at first, the developers were kind of like off on their own. Like the first like six months after the, game, the initial vanilla Diablo 3 came out, it was really hard to get a feel for what the developers were thinking. But they like reversed course in that first year, and now I think most of the community would agree. We really feel like we have a really close connection to the developers. Sure. Um, they, you know, they constantly talk about community posts like this. Mm -hmm. They're constantly doing, you know, like the design of legendary. Sure. Uh, that they've done a few of. They're they're really well connected. So I think you know players get that feeling that devs are actually listening and they're willing to put in the work if they think the devs are gonna see it. Absolutely. That speaks volumes for the dev team. It really does. Yeah, really, really does. So, cool, man. Anything else in the Diablo world? No, nope, that was it for this week. All right. Well, let's move on to the Hearthstone Five Thousand. Stutter, what is going on in in the Hearthstone world? Well, let's go over my uh, my climb through the ladder. So I started, I think, at rank like twelve last week, mm -hmm. and then I got all the way up to rank five. Decently, you know, all right, but it was on. Uh, it's one of those things where you see the meta evolve as you go up in the ranks. So the higher ranks, like I would say like 7 to beyond that to 20. Because if you're all above rank 20, 21, then it's like everything goes. You know, you see basic cards all the time. Yeah. Um, but Which is nobody's see, fault. I mean, those are people who like... They're just having fun. Just you know, I fun. respect those people. Me too. Yeah, I, I like those people. You always play against them and you're like, wow. You're playing that card. Yeah. That's that's some swag. What is right it? What there. is it? The the voodoo witch doctor or whatever the crap it's called that the the two one that restores yeah. two health. 
I mean, I've seen ETC, you know? Yeah, as soon as that bad boy comes out, you know, get re- get ready, because you're going right. to see some serious crap. Yep. <laughs> I know. I know. But, so, <laughs> above 8 to, like, 20, you see a lot of, like, aggro decks. You get, like, you know, the Paladins, the Hunters, the stuff we always talk about. Mm-hmm. You know, the mid-range Mage, the Aggro Mage, the Mech Mage, the... Mech and aggro mage are pretty much the same thing. Just some use more mechs. Um, <laughs> some use more aggro. So yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, then you get um, obviously the warlock. You know, you get the zoo decks. But as soon as you hit like this rank, around seven or eight, and going on, you get like this control. Just everyone plays controlled now. So like you have to switch decks. So like I see a lot more like at rank five and rank six. I see a ton of, you know, control warrior, mm-hmm. not that much patron warrior, but a lot of uh, handlock. Mm-hmm. Handlock is a deck you never see against all this aggro stuff, you know? You play handlock against mech mage, you're going to lose 99% of the time. Yeah. I don't care what anyone tells you, maybe 66% of the time, but you're going to lose a lot. Right. You know, you play against hunter, it's like, well, they're going to pass you to death. Yes. It's as simple as that. But up in the higher ranks, you see all these control decks, so like mid range pally and everything like that. And it was, it was like I remember this shift happening when I used to like just go hardcore in Hearthstone all the time. But I just forgot about it, you know. So like if you if you get up into the higher ranks, you see a lot more control decks. You see, I mean, Druid's really popular, right? Druid can beat you at any time. All you need is Force and Roar and. 26 other cards. Yeah. Well, four, sorry, 22 other cards because you got the Aspriths that yes. Reb loves. <laughs> Asprints, yes. Asprints. <laughs> Asprints. As- and then some you got do- Wild Some Gross. dwarf Asprints. Yeah, but after that, you just got like 22 other cards and that's it. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but it was just a, it was a crazy switch to me. Like, you know, I started putting BGH back in my decks. I didn't. I didn't have a need for uh, as much Harrison Jones mm-hmm. or Acidic Swamp Oozes. I even, you know, didn't have as much need for Silences or anything like that. And obviously, Flare was useless when I played Hunter. Oh, well, yeah. I did most of my climb with Patron Warrior, and then I switched to Druid when I got to rank 8. Okay. And it just plays... Druid plays so nice, guys. It just plays so nice, so easy. You don't have to think too much. You wild growth on turn two. You play your turn four card on turn three because you wild growth. You play and you just your go through and you just play a threat. If they deal with it, you lose. If yeah. they don't, you win. It's and as simple as that. And then on turn nine, you force of nature, savage roar, innervate, savage roar, and do like 77 yeah, plus coin, damage. Plus in. coin. Oh, plus coin. Yes. Yeah. Of course, because we hold on to that bad boy. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> or, or if you're really lucky, you get to play emperor. On turn six, and then four star on turn seven. Oh yes, oh yeah. It's a lot of fun. No, it's you have to wait to turn eight. No, because turn nine and it's two cards, so each one gets knocked off by one. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot both of them get knocked off by one. Yeah. Yep. So that's why like card combos are amazing with um with of emperor. Course. So like yeah. freeze mage, if you get an emperor in there, you can just like pound out fireballs with uh. Antonitis. Yeah, Antonitis. I forgot the name of him for a second. It's all good. Anyways, so that's my slow breakdown of the meta. Mm-hmm. Aggro up until, you know, 8. So I'll play, like, something really anti-aggro, such as maybe check out Twiz's um, Shaman deck. Yep, and if you really, if you want that deck list, you can uh, either hit me up on Twitter at TwizBP or hit me an email, podcast.blizzpro.com, or just wait till next week, because I think we're going to cover it next week. So... Mm-hmm. And then after that, you just play Druid or some control deck that you feel really comfortable with that you know you can just outplay the other person with. Mm-hmm. Like, that's the big thing is, like, if you play a matchup 100 times and you know what to do, like, you, if you know a deck really well, you can improve a matchup by 5 to 10% easy. Yeah. You know, you can make Handlock almost not, like, lose 60% of the time instead of 70 or 80% of the time against Hunters. Yeah, yeah. You just know what to keep, you know what to mulligan. So play the deck you're really confident with and you know wins. Even if it doesn't, like, 
even if it doesn't have a good matchup, you can you can out out biscuit mulligan your opponent. Yep. So that's my that's my meta. That's the meta breakdown. breakdown. The yep. meta breakdown. Now let's go to the deck of the week. Okay. So we got a uh, we got a temple burst. Do you want to talk about Belrog for a second? <laughs> yeah, you know what? I got this um, I got this email from Belrog fan, um, who also does the Heroes of the Storm uh, show with me, and he's like, you know what? I kind of like this deck, and I was like, send it to me, you know, or whatever. So he sent us an email, and Stutter, I don't have that pulled up right now. Is that something you could read real quick? Um, so it's just, dear Twizcast crew, I'm impressed he thinks we're crew. That's right. Uh, <laughs> I came across this deck and found it to be very interesting and fun. It is not on the front page of Hearthpone. Spelled Hearthpone wrong. Or anything. Hey, whatever. We don't crap <laughs> I, on people. I know. I'm just teasing because it's Belrog. Anyone else, I wouldn't care. Uh, or anything, and I have yet to encounter anyone else playing it in the meta. I enjoyed very much. Be- I enjoyed very much because it is about early tempo, smart two for one trades, maintaining board control, and sudden burst that people do not often expect from priest. The idea is basically mech priest. The twist is keeping spawn of shadows or mind blast in your hand until turn nine for a big burst of damage that is often unexpected after dealing with the strong body mechs the entire game. It is a bit different from Dragon Priest, but it is a nice option for players who might not have a ton of new cards or just want to play something different and surprising. I'm happy to report that after a bit of playing, I'm 6-2 and two with this deck. I enjoy the show and all of your respective vast knowledge of the games you play. Keep up the wonderful work, Belrog Fan BP. Cool. So, so first off, guys, check out Belrog Fan BP. Yes. He's a very entertaining character. Absolutely. Absolutely, and he does a show called Flask Action Heroes, where him and his co-host get drunk and talk through entire movies. It's the most amazing thing I've ever heard in my life. That's pretty awesome. Like, I mean, I don't like claim that I'm some big amazing host or anything like that, but I listen to the way he hosts his show, and it's like I need to step my game up. So, Flask Action Heroes, check that out. But um, real quick, so basically the, the the basics of this deck, and I'm gonna let Stutter break it down. But just to recap, what he said is is this whole deck is based off of like mechs. And and dropping some some heavy bodied mechs um, that your opponent has to try and work through and work around and stuff like that. And then at the very end, um, you've got Spawn of Shadows, which is a four mana five four, and it is an inspire. So you use your hero power, and it deals four damage to each hero. So uh, his the basic the idea of this deck is to be able to finish them off with a mind blast. Um, and a uh, Spawn of Shadows. Uh, Mm -hmm. And that is going to be... That's 9 damage. That's 9 damage right there. So, um, and if you have... I mean, I don't know. There's no Emperor Thorson in here or anything like that. So the the biggest burst you're going to get is 2 Mind Blasts for 10 damage. um, Or uh, Spawn of Shadows for 9 damage and a Mind Blast. Well, you could do... On turn 10, you could do 2 Mind Blasts, the Spawn of Shadows, Hero Power for 14 damage. Wait, say it again. Two mind blasts and spawn of shadows plus hero power for fourteen damage. Two because mind blasts is mind blast four, only costs eight. two. Oh, so. it does. It only costs two. Yes. Yep. Or well, it costs four, but it's two to use. Yeah, so yeah. that's okay. So you're right. Just two. Yep. That's ten. That's fourteen damage. Yep. Exactly. Yeah, I know that because I finished the guy off like that, and I felt I felt good. I, felt <laughs> good. <laughs> I was thinking. Oh, I was thinking about having two spawn of shadows, and I'm like, okay, well, you drop two spawn of shadows and. You heal yourself, and there's four damage, or one spawn of shadows and two mind blast, or uh, you know, and a mind blast. I wasn't taking into effect or uh, into account that the other mind blast was only two mana, so that would be 14 damage. Good call. This is why you're the legendary player, and I'm not. <laughs> I just played way too much Hearthstone when I didn't have a job. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. <laughs> Anyways, let's go through. Like Belrog said, it's basically Mech Priest. Mm-hmm. All right. You got Clockwork Gnomes, Cogmasters, Anoyotrons, Mech Warpers, Shadow Boxes, which is really cool. Harvest Golems, which are really cool. Uh, Piloted Shredders, which are the best four drop in the, drop in the game. I stand by it. Um, and then you got uh, one Piloted Sky Golem and one Dr. Boom. And those kind of the regular cards that you see in every mech deck of all time. Now, one thing I want to talk about for a second is the Piloted Sky Golem. I like this card instead of Sylvanas because you you are like the beat down in this. You just sit there and like Sylvanas doesn't gain you anything, right? Because if they clear your board, you're pretty much 
you're 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 gonna lose. So Sylvanas doesn't help you maintain board somehow. Right. Piloted Sky Golem does the same thing but better. And you can play it on an empty board or anything else like that. Like you're probably winning by turn six, you can tell you're winning, but if you play Sylvanas, you could lose the game. With Piloted Sky Golem, you lose the game less. So that's I like actually that addition over Sylvanas. Sure. So after that, we got two powered shields. This is just to help with maintaining your creatures, keep them alive, because you oh. obviously have to do... Play. And also, this deck list is going to be available on blizzpro.com when we post the show. So you don't worry about writing it down or trying to remember this or anything like that. If you're listening to this right now, you can go to blizzpro.com, and you'll see the Twizcast post up there, and you'll see this deck list on there. So, <laughs> so yeah. sorry about that. Oh, you're all right. So we got two powered shields for basically card draw plus keeping your creatures alive. I mean, powered shield's awesome. We also got two North Shire Clerics, which you wouldn't normally see in a deck like this, but it's North Shire Cleric. It's an amazing one drop. It it allows you to draw a bunch of cards. Uh, it, it's incredible. Two Mind Blasts for finishing, right? Mm -hmm. it, mind, finishing with a Mind Blast is just a glorious thing that everyone should achieve in their lives at least once. Uh, Absolutely. We got, we got one Iron Beak Owl just to get past taunts, guys, because you need to do, like I said before, I need to do a certain amount of damage. Uh, we got two or one Velen's Chosen. It's just to help you basically maintain, like, you get Valen's Chosen on a Noyotron. That thing's an ultimate on Noyotron. That's coin, oh, by the I way, guys. I just figured out you're in-game right now reading this. You're reading what? this deck list off of in-game? No, no, I went through and I did the mechs first. Oh, okay, okay, I gotcha. Yeah, because, uh, I mean, the mechs, everyone knows what the mechs are. So, actually, I didn't include Tinkertown Technician because, I mean, that's, that's a great three drop, especially if you have a mech out there, like, if you don't have a mech out there, you're like, oh my god, I cannot believe I'm playing this card in oh, yeah. three. Yeah. But if you do, it's a 4-4. Four, four. I mean, it's just a beast. It helps you maintain board control, you know, and it, it doesn't die too much. So, that's a great card, obviously. The Spawn of Shadows, I like this card a lot. I'll, I'm willing to drop that on turn four, you know? Yeah. It's If he doesn't kill it, you know, it's, I mean, it's four damage to you and four damage to him, but you couldn't, I couldn't tell you how many times I lethaled them off of Spawn of Shadows, and I ended up with like two health, and they ended up dead, you know? They were sure. like, man, I got this, no problem, and there's the there's the damage. Yep. Now one of the things I have a question about in this deck, and I'm not against it, I just not all for it yet, is the Holy Nova. The Holy Nova is a board clear. It's to help you maintain board presence, I guess. But at the same time, you know, if you're turn five and you're still betting for a board, Holy Nova I don't think will help you much. I think it'll is easily replaced by a five drop creature, right? Because if you're if you're losing so much, you need Holy Nova. That's not going to bring you back into the game, you know? That's not the type of play well, the, you want this the, priest to play. The swing that the Holy Nova has is when, like, let's say you're, you're, you're playing Druid, okay? And you're dropping your mechs and everything like that, and they're dropping threats that you can't do anything about. You either have to cash in your whole board just to take care of this one or, these one or two threats, or you just ignore them and go face. And, in, in, and as the game progresses, their threats just get worse to the point that they're just going to overtake you. What Holy Nova does is it breaks down their board a little bit to maybe help you make a little bit more efficient trades. But I um, think you could get the same thing with that uh, five drop. It's a three three, but it does four damage to a character you pick. I think you get the same thing out of that. Oh, bomb lobber, bomb lobber. Yeah, I think bomb lobber could be a good. It might not substitute be substitute for Holy Nova, to be honest, because I think it does the same thing you want, but it also allows you to play it on an empty board or basically, it, I think it does a little bit more. But it also doesn't. The one thing I should say is the Holy Nova gives you healing with North Shadow Cleric, which is a big deal. Yeah, it's a huge deal. And also deal. with Shadow Boxers, of course, too. And it also benefits off of Ellen's Chosen. Mm hmm. So, so those three things. But I, I think Bomb Lobber, if you're, if you're asking questions about Holy Nova, try out Bomb Lobber. Okay. Could be a thing. Uh, we got one Lotheb. It's Lotheb, guys. I mean, nothing else can be said. If you have board and you get to play Lotheb, you pretty much won the game because they can't do anything about the board. They have to play a threat into Lotheb, which usually Lotheb trades for easy. Plus, yeah. you already have your board and you can just play, you know, Piloted Sky Golem or another threat or anything like that. One thing that's bad about this deck is you can run out of cards pretty easily. Yes. That's why you got to get those North Shark Clerics rolling. And it's, it's not as easy without Circle Healing, but it's... It's still pretty good. Yep, it's you know? still it's still workable. Um, and uh, one of the other things that you did mention is if you don't get tempo right off the bat, it's easy to get mowed down. 
Mm -hmm. So, you know, uh, take it for take it for what it's worth. Um, I would definitely tinker around with it um, with your friends and with uh, in in casual mode or something like that to get the feel for it. Um, Make whatever adjustments you want. And if you do make some adjustments that seem to be working out, let us know. Podcast at BlizzPro.com. And uh, we can pass that pass that message along very easily. So, um, very cool. Very cool. Well, again, uh, a big, big thank you to uh, Balrog Fan BP for sending that deck list in to us. And if you have a deck list that you think is really awesome uh, that you want to share on the show, let us know. Because uh, the sooner you can get it to me, the sooner I can get it to Stutter, the sooner Stutter can play it, and the sooner we can break it down for you. So... Um, very cool. Anything else on, uh, on, uh, Hearthstone? I mean, tear it up, guys. Get to that rank five. Get that, get that sweet stuff going. You know, get those rewards. Those rewards. <laughs> I have no idea what the reward is. That's why I wanted to do it, you know? I get uh, so excited. Um, the rewards, dude, you get, uh, the rewards that I got, I got like two golden cards and some gold and some dust last, last go around. The little oh. the little boxes appear on the screen. Oh, <laughs> uh oh, that hashtag said face. Yeah, stutters just like. <laughs> yeah. So let's move on. Let's go so, to Heroes of the Storm. Fair enough. Let's jump into the uh, the Heroes de la Storm, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, last week on Twitter. A abilities list for the medic was released and confirmed by community manager Trixler uh, that these were, in fact, the actual abilities of the medic. And uh, as I was typing these show notes, um, everything broke loose or whatever. She is now on the PTR, available for play. So this is these are this is not any new news or anything like that. Um, but originally she was supposed to be on the PTR last week, and that ended up not happening so much. So I don't know what's going on there, but. Um, but yeah, so the medic is is now out and and for play. Have you guys taken a look at her or anything like that? I have not, but just doing a little bit of research about her abilities, it's just it, it kind of leaves me scratching my head. And I don't know if y'all agree, but when I know we're about to cover this, but her her heroics just don't really seem to fit the what they were going for for the medic. I don't know. It, it just seems strange to me. I don't know. Stutter, do you have do you have any opinion on... I gotta be honest. I think the medic looks awesome. I think it looks ridiculously overpowered. It's, you're gonna see it in every game. It's it's just amazing. It has control with the bomb. It has a massive amount of healings with that healing beam that you can move around and attack with while you're channeling it. You got your little... your ability, your base ability, which takes off, I think, 25% or 15% of, of damage in general. To a oh, character, yeah. that's huge. It is huge. It is huge. Well, you know well, what? We'll get let's, to that in a second. Let's break it down. Let's let's break her down a little bit, guys. Um, <clears throat> so here's the abilities. And first off, we'll, let's take a look at her real quick. Uh, I don't know what I was expecting. What I saw, like on pictures of the website and stuff like that, versus now that I'm actually seeing her. Um, have you guys ever seen like pictures of of Big Hero Six? Yes. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, like less that's inflatable. that's kind of, yeah. She looks like she's kind of like inflated with a bunch of armor in there. So, <laughs> anyway, definitely float in a pool. Yeah, that's one of the things that I noticed. Um, but I am like I'm dying. I'm dying to play her. Um, so yeah, the Q ability, healing beam. It is uh, you. You heal an ally for 20 health uh, per second as long as they are in range. So there is no cooldown on this or anything like that. You just target it. And one of two things will happen. You will continue to heal them until you run out of mana, or um, you can stop healing when you switch targets or reactivate your Q again. Um, safeguard is is your W ability, and it grants an ally uh, resistant, do, uh, grant target ally resistant, reducing damage taken by 25% for three seconds, which I think is pretty huge. Um, it's basically, it's a bubble. Uh, mm -hmm. You've got a displacement grenade, fire a grenade that explodes on the first enemy hit, dealing 60 damage, knocking enemies away. Um, does not say anything about knocking heroes uh, on your team away. I don't know, though. I've not played her. Um, and then there is Caduceus Reactor, which a lot of people think it's Caduceus. However, I heard um, from a Blizzard person it is Caduceus, which <laughs> if it's got the word Dookie in it, I'm all in. All right. So uh, that is your trait. So basically, you're going to regenerate 3% of your maximum health every second. Um, 
once you have not taken damage for four seconds. So as you're getting out of the fight, as you're running away, you're now regening 3% of your maximum health. Um, the two heroic abilities, we got Stim Drone, which gives an allied hero 75% attack speed and 25% movement speed for 10 seconds, which is kind of insane all on its own. Um, and I can see some serious like damage outputters, uh, some assassins doing just crazy stuff with that. Um, and there is the Medivac Dropship, which everybody has been super, uh, super excited about. It's you target a location for a Medivac transport for up to 10 seconds before takeoff. Allies can right click and enter the Medivac. It's also called the Feed Bus, <laughs> is, uh, is what I'm hearing people. Because there are people dropping ships right in the middle of everything and just getting blown up. So um, that's something to look forward to. Now, a couple of things. The feed bus, uh, while everybody's loading up, I think it's like seven or eight seconds for people to get loaded up into the feed bus. Um, it can get destroyed. So if you see people loading into the feed bus and they're getting ready to blast off and take out your core, blow up the feed bus and, <laughs> and problem solved. So um, I'm not going to give a build for this because I don't know anything about it, but we'll just run through some of the talents. Um, for, uh, for, for talent pick one, you can get prolonged safeguard, which is inc increases safeguards duration by one second. Uh, again, that's the shield. Um, you can get trauma trigger where you gain an untalented safeguard automatically. If you take damage while below 50% health, this effect has a 20 second cooldown. So kind of like an auto bubble, basically. Um, there's feedback loop. When safeguard expires, 45 mana is refunded. And then there's a scouting drone. We all know what scouting drones do. You put it at a target location and it re reveals the area around it for 45 seconds. Uh, it's hidden un um, un until it's killed by the enemies. So uh, t let's see here. Level 4, you can get bio shield for your Q ability. If your target's at full health, they gain a shield that absorbs 20 damage, stacking up to five times. So basically a shield for 100 damage, not bad. Um, there's advanced block, we've, we've seen this before. It's a passive, you period periodically reduces the damage received um, from hero basic attacks by 50%. Um, there's upgraded ballistics, where your displacement grenade travels 50% faster and enemies directly impacted take 33% more damage. Kind of interesting. Um, infused grenade, displacement grenades, mana cost is refunded if you hit an enemy hero. Um, this goes on and on. The, a, a lot of these, a lot of these traits are, um, uh, you see them in other, in other heroes. Uh, it's nothing surprising. There's a couple of things that's kind of like, eh, it's kind of, it's kind of interesting and very unique to her. Um, but you got, you have the, uh, the call down mule, uh, at level seven that you could take. Um, not a big surprise there. Uh, level 10, we've already talked about the heroics. Um, for 13, um, you could do like intensive care when your healing beam is in a single target for over three seconds, it's healing increases by 25% and the mana cost increases by four. That is one of the things that I'm seeing the most with some of these talents, um, is it's like, Hey, we're going to give you better perks, but it's going to cost you more mana. So I have not, again, I've not played her to know what the mana regen is like. If she has mana issues, then it's going to, it's going to really affect these talents in a big way in, in how you pick them or whatever. Um, and again, there is no passive AOE healing or anything like that. There's no way, um, I mean, you can shield people and you can do direct heals. Now what that does is the direct heal hits every half second. So it's hitting twice per second. And the way that you play her is, is you're, you are just, you're following your group around and you are queuing on the different team members. And because it's, it's hitting every half second, um, you're really, really racking up the heels um, and switching from target to target. So it's a very unique play style uh, that she's got from what I've seen. And I, I'm, I, I think it's it's personally really awesome. Um, at level 20, you do have, you can get transfusion where it increases the duration of your stim drone by two seconds. Um, you also gain the effect of stim drone when cast on an ally. Um, and again, that was the increase, uh, increase everything by 75% attack speed and 25% movement speed. So basically, um, uh, it increases the duration of that by two seconds. And you also gain the effect of it, uh, when you cast it on an ally, because casting it on an enemy would be a better idea to give them 75% attack speed and 25% movement speed. I, I don't know why they put that in there. That's weird. Um, but then there's the meta cast it on yourself normally. I don't know, man. I I don't know. No, I don't think you. No, you don't cast it on. I I. It depends I on the team. I think you can count. cast it on yourself, but I don't think you do. <laughs> yeah, you don't. I don't think you do. I think that's meant for like. I could really see like a sergeant hammer going nuts with that, or like a, an Illidan or something like that. That's just 
Rainer man. Rainer. Oh yeah, Rainer. yeah. That's what I was thinking. I wonder if it would stack with Rainer's and Absolutely. Courage. Absolutely, it does Absolutely. stack with. Yeah, it stacks with Rainer, and then you also obviously got Butcher and Illidan, like you said. Yep. Yep, or even a Tychus. Man, getting that minigun wound up and just rolling. Mm, yeah. So one of the things is, and I question this, Medic in StarCraft could not heal itself. They could heal each other. Yeah, they could heal other Medics, but not itself. Yeah, yeah so can Medic not heal herself? Well, I mean, they, all she has to do is not ally. take damage. All she has to do is not take damage. Yeah, so but I'm talking about behind, the Q ability. Oh, well, no, I, my thoughts is, like, if you're being a good support and hanging out in the back and not taking damage, you're going to be passively healing yourself with that 3% of your there's, health. There's if another you're... thing somewhere that also says you can do this to an, oh, uh, I think it's grant target ally resistant mm -hmm. um, for your safeguard, but you can cast that on you yourself as well. Yeah, so I don't know. Sure I don't think you can cue yourself. I mean, yeah, so I don't, I don't think that she ha she's flexible enough to like, you know, get all that armor up over and shoot herself in the head, you know. <laughs> That's just me. I mean, look at her; she's kind of, she's kind of jolly know. right now. But that just looks like a bad idea, you know. She's sitting there walking around like this, like <laughs> yeah, <laughs> drilling, <laughs> drilling into her head. Yeah, yeah. So if you guys are looking to combat her, just bully her around, you know, get her out of combat. Yeah, get her having to leave combat so she can't heal her people. But she looks deadly with an auto attacker. She does. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, anyways, um, let's take a look at uh, at some of the skins. Um, she came with two skins. Normally, oh, well, wait a minute. Oh, well, this is the, uh, um, whatchamacallit, this is the uh, the PTR. So, the master skin's not on the PTR, obviously. That um, is crazy looking. So, anyways, we've seen that. Very cool. Um, Alliance Alliance skin. Which I thought was really interesting that they put an alliance crest on a StarCraft person, but hey, whatever. Um, oopsies, why is that? Why is it wigging out here? There we go. Um, yeah, that's very Diablo-ish, I would say. Wouldn't you say, Archon? Oh, yeah, is that supposed to be like a Crusader thing? I guess. I don't know what it is. I don't know. I don't know. It's gold and white, and it looks like, it looks like she should be rocking out on Tyrael's Charger. So... <laughs> And then there's uh, Apocryphy, Apocryphy Morales. And, um, yeah. Gosh, why is this thing? This thing's really being touchy on me here. Um, sorry for those of you who are listening to this on the download. We are going through the skins right now, and, and I'm trying to show it, and it's not cooperating very well. So That last skin for the Apothecary Morales is just so awesome. The, the green the green and the vials are just neon. They yeah. look amazing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's crazy. With uh, with the black and red, I mean, it absolutely stands out. A little Doctor Doomish, little yeah, Doctor Doomish. I mean, that's just that's just me. So, anyways, but I'm a fan. The medic, as soon as they announced it, the medic was like an instant fave that I was looking forward to, like right now. So, yeah, I'm I'm super glad that she's here. I can't wait to dive into her, um, so to speak. So. But again, initially I was just a little put off that there was no AOE healing, but after seeing what she's uh, what she's kind of capable of, after watching some of the PTR streams that are going on on Twitch, um, you know, pretty excited about that. So um, let's talk a little bit about one of the cool things uh, that Blizzard is doing as far as uh, a weekly sale. Cloud9, we talked about this, they won the America's Championship. Um, and so because of that, they have a weekly sale on Cloud9's winning team comp. Um, so in, ad in addition to the normal... The normal weekly sale items, the following heroes who were played by Cloud9 in the final game of the tournament will also be on sale. We've got Malfurion at $1.99. buck ninety-nine. We've got Jaina at four ninety-nine. Taranda, Taranda, I'm saying it right now. Taranda at four twenty-four. Mirrodin at one ninety-nine, and Zagara at four twenty-four. So I thought that was pretty cool. Um, all these heroes are currently quite popular in competitive play, so this actually is really uh, a great opportunity to add some strong heroes to your roster at a discount. Um, let's see here. Um, speaking of new hero skins and mounts, Blizzard released a new video showing some of the news uh, or some of the new goodies that are coming up in the uh, in the not too distant future as far as Heroes of the Storm. We'll uh, we'll take just a quick look at that. Uh, play there we go so okay so obviously we've got Lieutenant Morales who is who we just we just talked about and uh, and all of her skins 
Um, it's funny because she doesn't look Big Hero 6-ish in this video. But maybe that's just me. There's the Master Skin that we didn't get a chance to show you guys. And actually, there's the Samus Master Skin. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. The pink I can take a pass on. Um, a lot of these things are coming out on October 6th, which is going to be next week. And then a lot of them are, are slated for October, I think, 27th. Um, so what you don't see on October 6th is is slotted to be on 27th. Some of these upcoming things. Uh, Artanis, I believe, is also located... Or, He's going to be on the uh, uh, the October 27th patch drop, or I think that's at least when he's tentatively supposed to be. Um, the Master Skin, uh, which is 427 Shades of Sexy, um, is absolutely phenomenal. Also, um, what was I going to say? There was something else I was going to build on that. Oh, Purifier Artanis. Very robotic looking. Um, oh, Artanis is going to be one of those types of heroes. From what we've been told, uh, they are going to be in the middle of the fight. And they are very hard class to, to master. So, uh, There's Marshall Rainer. That's uh, awesome. Yep, very, very cool skin. Um, and he also does like a, a coin flip um, when he does when he, his... Uh, what's that? When he inspires, right? Yeah, when he inspires, he does this little coin flip. Um, he, that's part of his themed abilities. And it's cool, the little shotgun shells also kind of fall down. Uh, on the ground too, um, I think. I mean, I don't know. I don't play enough Rainer Buccaneer Falstad. All right, Blizzard, you shut your filthy mouth. You take my money. You put it in your pocket. and You go buy something. <laughs> I don't even play Falstad, and I want oh, it yeah. so bad. Yep, the auto attacks are cannonballs, and his hammer is now an anchor, which is just unbelievable. And actually, the bird has a peg leg. If you look. Oh, that's adorable. <laughs> yes. The bird has like a little, actually it's like a hook leg or something like that. So pretty amazing. Um, Marshall's Outrider, obviously the the mount that matches um, Rainer's new skin. Uh, it's a full on thing. Uh, I, You know what? There's no doubt in my mind whatsoever that, uh, that Blizzard is going to make this a pack or a bundle. The Void Speeder. Guys, this Void Speeder that you're looking at right now comes with the pre-order of um, uh, Legacy of the Void. So um, I don't think that's going to be released in patch notes. The Nexus Battle Beast, another another Kodo, another Kodo Mount Blizzard. Come on, I mean it's a good <laughs> thing that you released 400 other awesome things because I'd really be angry about that. The Headless Horseman's Charger. Again, you shut your mouth, you take my money. Um, I think it's phenomenal the way they 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 tip their hat to these kinds of things. The Vulture, and there's Jim Rayner right there on the Vulture. Of course, through all the StarCraft, I mean, we met Jimmy on a uh, on a Vulture, and so it's it's about time that they brought him into the scene, uh, or brought that Vulture into the scene um, as a mount. So, anyways, guys, those of you watching this on the video, there's a little there's a little sneak preview of uh, what's in the works. Some of it we've already talked about, some of it we've already seen. But, um, anyways, I thought that was kind of a neat a neat thing. So, anything on there, guys? I know I flew through it, and that was simply because um, the video was playing live. Was there anything that stood out to you guys that you thought was particularly amazing? This, I would say the vulture. I have to have that vulture. I, I do like to play Nova a lot, and when they showed Spectre uh, Nova riding that vulture in, oh my god, take my money, please. Yeah, yeah. I gotta be honest. I'm psyched for Artanis. Are you really? Like we don't, nobody knows anything about him. I can't. Yeah, I mean, they they uh they did some data mining on him. Did they? I missed it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll check it out some other time. Okay. Check it out. All right. Next the, week, uh, next week's Twizcast. We'll look at. We'll see what Stuttered was able to find with the data mine that Twiz obviously missed. So. Yeah, yeah. yeah. One of his, one of his base <laughs> abilities is like just gonna create a massive havoc, and I'm pumped. Well, if the data mine's correct. Sure. Do <laughs> if it. Yeah. 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 Usually is. So. Ah. Whatever. Awesome stuff. Um, so, you know, Twiz, this is uh, normally the part where I try to do a cheesy introduction to a top ten list. <laughs> but I was uh, kind of hoping we could do something a little bit different this week. Just kind of switch things up a little bit. Uh, yeah. I, I think that you are onto something, Reb. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, Stutter and I did a little segment on the Hearthstone Power Hour that people found fairly entertaining. So we're going to give it a whirl here on Twizcast. So in place of the top ten list... Direct from the Hearthstone forums, I give you the community thoughts. Please enjoy. Thunderspank says, Blizzard, why do you never give me Legendary's cards? 
pack after pack I open and get same old yesterday's trash. Lulz? I see you give them all to Amaz. Does he pay you? Does he have blackmails on you? Do you have cardboard cutouts of him holding his cat in your bathroom? Probably. So the cat holder gets all the legendaries cards. I'm allergic to cats, so I can't even get legendaries cards that way either. You really screwed me, Blizzard, and so did Amaz. Dot dot dot. And his cats. Finally someone says it. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't agree more. Couldn't agree more. It is what it is, so... Let's see. Yeah. That's oh, what sorry. all of us were thinking. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's what everybody was thinking. I but mean, it's truly not fair to not offer a way to get legendaries if they're allergic to cats. And that's inconsiderate. I have it always said that. I have always said that. I actually thought that. the uh, the hack was having a cat. I thought it increased your drop rate. <laughs> I thought it was a little <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's not yep, yep. going to do you any good unless you're holding the cat. Just, I mean, just having it is not going to give you that drop rate increase. You I want to know how cardboard also. cutouts of a Maz got brought into his bathroom. I want to know how that happened. <laughs> Where'd that I come from? That's going to be one of the stuffs and things in the goodie bag for this year's BlizzCon. I hope yes. there's one in all of the bathrooms yes. at BlizzCon. Yes. yes. <laughs> Could not That's agree more. Heard. So, all right, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we will be right back after a very quick break. Stay tuned to episode five of TwizCast. Today, we salute you, Mr. Three Frames Per Second Man. Mr. Three Frames Per Second Man! You dare dream of a world where the fire animation is something you can easily walk out of. Get out of the fire! You boldly embark on quests that take four times as long. I don't know if I'm still in combat! And one day, you'll actually be able to see your bobber dip when you fish. I don't know if I should click now! And Moonguard will no longer kick you due to FPS problems. Mail not up looking for fun. So here's to you, Mr. Salton of Suck. DoghouseSystems.com can build you a rig and put you back in the game with the rest of us. You deserve it. Your raid team and arena team deserve it. And so do the rest of us. Mr. Three Frames Per Second Man. Go to DoghouseSystems.com and use the coupon code TWIZ at checkout to double your memory. TWIZCast would also like to remind you to game responsibly. Bounce in here, copy in the mail at the home 20. <laughs> okay, this is the part of the uh, show where we read our emails and... No emails this week. Absolutely oh, I nothing. Emails. I got some spam stuff. That Did you? I thought might, yeah, just some. Was it that Saudi Arabian prince telling you again that you won or that that you had like four billion dollars waiting for you? Yeah, but this one sounds really legit. <laughs> so I'm really gonna pursue this one, guys. I really am. <laughs> I really think that I have an email about some high heels. Apparently, it's talking about adding three inches. But honestly, I don't do a heel over two and a half inches. It's just way too much. Rip, risk. I don't know if that's what they're talking about adding uh... inches to. Hmm. I, I have an email from LA Fitness. Valued guest offer. I was a valued guest, apparently. You've never been into an LA Fitness in your life. <laughs> I went once. <laughs> I went once for a free time, and I didn't even go back. I had three free tries. I'm like, screw it. Gosh. They call me all the time now. But that's besides <laughs> So, guys, this is what happens. This is what we talk about when you don't send us emails. So, save everybody the discomfort, would you? Actually, we did get an email. We got the email from Balrog Fan with the... Uh, with the deck list of the week, so I really can't be, I can't be too, yeah, yeah, you know. So, um, podcast at blizzpro.com, guys, um, if you want to do that. Um, also, I think I'm going to fire up the Twiz line um, that you guys can call in and leave voicemails if you'd like. So, we might be able to do, we might be doing that soon. That was always a good time, so mm -hmm. we'll, we'll bring that back. So, um, we did, however, have one iTunes review, which, um, oh my gosh, I'm still in Hearthstone. How did that happen? Um we did have one iTunes review, so I'm not going to, um, I'm not going to shortchange this. We're going to do this right, as always. All right, this is from Jay Gilk, and he says, "You make what I find boring interesting." I heard about you from CTR. You make me interested in games I really do not enjoy. Congrats on that. 
90% WoW, 10% D3. I love it. I'll take 10%. 10%, absolutely. Okay with it. That's all Archon right there. That's all Archon. I mean, he's just yeah. raking it in. So 25% and, of the show, 10% of the interest. There you go. <laughs> 100% of the looks. <laughs> Anyways, very, very cool. Guys, um, five-star reviews, they really help out a ton. When people do a search for uh, Heroes of the Storm podcast or World of Warcraft podcast or whatever, the more five-star reviews we have, um, the higher we get pushed to the top of the list. If you listen to us and you enjoy what we put out on a weekly basis, uh, we just ask, please, help help put us on the map a little bit more. Um, it, 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 it just keeps the fuel the fuel burning and uh, it keeps, keeps the gears turning. And that rhymed completely on accident. So... Um, I want to give a, uh, a quick thank you to everybody that was involved uh, in, in help uh, helping put this podcast together. Uh, if you want to find it on iTunes, you can do a search for TwizCast and you will see our new logo. Um, again, five-star reviews, very, very appreciated. Uh, if you missed the beginning portion of the show and uh, you want to catch it, it'll be uploaded tomorrow morning on BlizzPro's YouTube channel. So make sure you guys are checking that out and subscribing to that. Um, or if you want to catch the live show Monday night on uh twitch.tv slash blizzpro, 9 p.m. Central Standard Time, 10 Eastern, 7 Pacific. We are going to be here live and in your face, in your ears. Come hang out in our chat room. Lots of love going on in there. Um, tomorrow night, we do the Heroes of the Storm Power Hour. We're going to break in, We're going to break down this patch. Uh, we're going to play a couple of games. It's going to be unruly, awesome fun. So make sure you guys uh, come back and check us out for that as well. That's also going to be on the BlizzPro YouTube channel as well. So... Um, let's see here. Before we're we're off and up out, Archon, you got anything you wanna you wanna talk to the people? Uh, oh, and after hours. Don't forget about after hours. Those of you who are in the chat room, those are the perks that you get. So, Archon, what you got for the masses before we're out? I just want to say that I hope all your drops are legendaries, and may all your legendaries roll ancient. Again, I love it. Every week, it just gives me it gives me goosebumps. And it's if like, I keep saying it, it'll be true eventually. It's four hundred degrees in this office right now, and I'm getting goosebumps. How does that happen? So, <laughs> anyways, how about you, Reb? Yeah, I'd like to give a shout out to all my dwarves out there. My dwarfs. My, <laughs> my dwarfs. dwarfs. My dwarfs. And uh, lastly, by Fire Be Fabulous, Rebneros has spoken. And how about you, Mr. Stutter? Just like Reb, get weird with it. You know she's getting weird with that dwarf. Get weird with it, too. Don't get weird with it, guys. Don't get weird with it. I'm here to tell you that. So. Um, on behalf of the entire TwizCast crew and BlizzPro and everybody around here, please, everybody, game safe, love one another, and if you are within the sound of my voice, take care. <laughs>